Hi, welcome to MJT Law. My name is Melanie Thorley and today we're going to look at how to fill in a general protections application. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to jump onto the Google website. We're going to Google Fair Work Ombudsman. Sorry, Fair Work Commission. And once we're on the Fair Work Commission website, we're going to figure out where to find the form. Now you'll see over the top, we're going to just pop in forms because that's probably the easiest way to find the forms and then we just click on forms. Now I know that a um, general protections application is a form F8 so we're just going to scroll down to form F8 and you'll see that there. So clicking on that gives you a chance to download a word version so that's what we're about to do. Okay so now we've got the form open and you'll see that these are there's some stuff at the front that tells you a little bit about what's going on, who can use this form, how you can complete it, and so on and so forth. Yep. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down to the bottom of this because you'll see it says remove this cover sheet and keep it for future reference. So what we're going to do is we're just going to delete it. You're welcome to keep it, but I'm not going to. Okay. We're at the top of the form F8, General Protections Application Involving Dismissal. Now you just put your details in there. I'm going to put a relatively generic name in there. Uh, postal address, we're going to have 10 White Lane. And we're going to make the suburb Spring Hill, because I know the suburb in Spring Hill is 4,000. And of course, I'm going to put Queensland in because Spring Hill is in Queensland. I'm going to put my work phone number in there. If you're no longer working or you, you put whatever phone number works for you, you don't even have to put a phone number in. You could just put the mobile number in if you wanted to. And the address is going to, I'm going to put my work address in there. Okay, now it's asking um, uh, if you want to name an industrial association, you're probably doing this on your own. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave all this out. And we're going to say the preference is to email because post just takes too long. Um, if you do need an interpreter, this is the time to put it in there and you'd put yes and put your specific language or if you need any other special assistance. We're going to put no on each of these. Do you have a representative? Now that's when you have a non-legal or non-lawyer advocate or a solicitor. If they're gonna, if you do have one of those people, it is more than likely that they're gonna be filling in the form for you. So we're just gonna put no there as well. And we're gonna leave the representative details out. Um, and we're gonna keep moving down. Now, it's got, the next part is when you put your employer in there. This is actually really important that you get this right. So, you, we recommend, absolutely recommend that you go to your payslip and you put the legal name of your employer that's on your payslip. We're just going to put MJT Law on this and we're going to put MJT Law's ABN. Okay, and we're going to put the contact person as, I don't know, John, oops. John Doe, and we're going to do the postal address. Well, that's going to be 215 Wharf Street, because that's where we are. Suburb Spring Hill, Queensland, postcode 4000, phone number 07-3040-3040-3430. And the email address is going to be admin again. But obviously you'll be putting your employer's details in there. The contact person is probably going to be someone that either your direct line or the manager or the owner or HR. It'll be someone that you, 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 would, not, you would automatically have identified as the right person to receive this form. Okay, what date did you start working for an employer? We're just going to put 1 of January in there. And I'll oh, put 2017. Make it a little ways away, yep. And date you were notified of your dismissal, we're going to put 1 June 2020 and your dismissal took effect four weeks later. So we're going to say the 28th of June. Yeah, and we're going to say that you were told that you were resigning and that you had to give a four weeks notice. So we're just going to put their weeks notice in. Yeah, just 
just so the person who's reading this form has an understanding of what's actually going on. Are you making this application within 20 calen 21 calendar days? We are going to put yes, because if you put no, you're going to have a, uh, some challenges with out of time applications. We would absolutely encourage you to jump onto the Fair Work Commission website, download the bench book in, unfair in general protections and get a feel for uh, out of time applications if indeed you are making one outside the 21 days. Okay, have you made another claim to the Commission or someone like the Human Rights Commission? We're going to say no. If you say yes, there's going to be some challenges with making two applications at the same time. So absolutely consider what you're up to there. Now, remedy, what outcome are you seeking by lodging this application? So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this across to make it super fast. And we're going to say past economic loss, and that's going to be really easy for you to calculate. What you do is you take the date that you finished work up to the date that you're making this application, and you're going to say, if you haven't found a job in that time, you're going to say your economic loss is whatever loss of pay you received between then and then. Future economic loss is, um, the, we're going to calculate future economic loss as loss that, you've, that you think you're going to be um, losing, um, money you're going to be losing between the time you've filed your application and the time you think you're going to get a settlement or at the time of conciliation. So if you've immediately found another job, happy days, but you might be, you may be earning 80,000 and your new job might be 70. So there's going to be an amount of economic loss there. Now there is uh, damages, uh, general damages for pain and suffering, inconvenience, etc. So we put that in as well. We recommend that you put something in the range of twenty to forty thousand dollars. It's a spitball, absolutely a spitball. Some practitioners will encourage you to put one hundred and fifty, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in there. Some practitioners will encourage you to put something between five and thirty thousand dollars in there. We're just saying, um, put something between twenty and forty, and leave it at that. Okay, the alleged contravention. We're gonna, I'm gonna put what we've already written. I've, uh, oh, did that work? Yes, it did. No, it didn't. Okay, sorry guys, I'm gonna put it in here. Okay, so it's numbered paragraphs. Yep, as you see. <clears throat> so you just make the paragraphs numbered and you just say what happened. This is your chronology. On this date, I started work. On this date, this horrible thing happened to me. And on this date, I was either terminated or not. If you weren't terminated, then obviously we're going to have troubles filing a application involving dismissal. Uh, and that also includes constructive dismissal. So we're just going to put in here that on the 2nd of January, I asked about my wages because I wasn't sure how much money I was getting. and. Uh, I also asked on the same day when I was getting paid. The response I got the next day was, you'll get what you get when you get it, and if you ask again, I'll put you on report. And then on the 25th of June, I asked again, because I really wasn't getting my pay regularly. And uh, the reply I got was, if this is the way you're gonna behave, I accept your resignation, your four weeks notice starts today. Okay, so we're gonna say that there is a protection available to us. And I have pre-filled in, what to do here. This says um, explain how your actions described in 3.1, which is your chronology, uh, with the contraventions of um, the sections, which is 3.2. Now we've identified that it's a protection under 340, which is a workplace right. Um, and what we're going to say is under section 340 of the Fair Work Act, a person must not take adverse action against another person for exercising a workplace right. Now, you'll see in um, the General Protection Bench book that a workplace right is including a complaint or inquiry in relation to your job. Asking for your pay is a complaint or an inquiry. You exercise the workplace right by making an inquiry about when and how you will be paid oops, how I will be paid, and making a second inquiry about being paid. Okay, the adverse treatment was making you feel fearful for your job, making me, <laughs> sorry, Be 
fearful for your job, uh, saying, I will be put, put on notice if I ask again. And the last one will be being terminated with four weeks notice. Okay. Then it's the disclosure part. This is this part's really about what the commission is going to do with your material. So we we always say no, we don't want to be contacted by researchers. You can imagine that a law firm's not interested in that, but you might be interested in doing that. Um, you put your signature in, you're going to put your name. Now I've called myself Jane Doe. Um, I am the applicant in this um, in this application, and the date will be you know today's date. Yep, today's date. Okay, and it says here you should retain, retain a copy for your own records. Now you're going to turn this into a PDF and you're going to be emailing it to the Commission. So hopefully you'll keep a copy of that email and you'll also keep a copy of that PDF. Just a bit further down is the application. So again, it's Jane Doe and you're going to have some payment options here. I've completed the waiver form, that could be the, what you've done. You're paying in cash, so you're going to have to go and pop, your, pop into the Fair Work Commission um, office. You've attached a cheque, so that's going to be by post. Um, post is taking a little while at the moment, just be careful of those delays. And Or I'm paying by credit card. So I'm going to press X because that's what we usually do. It's going to be you that's doing it. Yep, I am the applicant. The name of the payer is Jane Doe. And the postal address, we've put 10 White Lane. Um, you know, the rest of that. And the phone number is 07304043430 and the email address was admin at mjtlaw.com.au. Now what will happen is once you file this application and you file it by jumping onto the Fair Work Commission's website, you would go Brisbane office in the search terms. So we're going to do that. We're going to have, go to the contact page and we're going to scroll down until we get to the details. Uh, where do we? Where's my Brisbane details? Call us, overseas, lodge us, email us. Hmm. Let's try this. Queensland, voila. Here we go, so you email it to brisbane at fwc.gov.au. So once you've filed the form, the Fair Work Commission will call you probably within about 24 hours asking for money. It's around $70.90 I think at the moment, or $72.90 at the moment to file a uh, general protections application. So they will ask for that money over the phone. If you're unable to give them the money at that time, it is more like, or you don't answer the phone, it's more likely than not you'll receive an email notifying you that you haven't completed your application and that there is still a payment outstanding. Just see to that payment as soon as possible. The Commission won't wait more than, say, a week or two for that payment. Okay, thank you for watching. If you're having any problems with your General Protections application, let us know. We should be able to help you. We do this a fair amount. Uh, and if you want us to file the application on your behalf and prepare and file it, then absolutely just give us a call. Thank you for watching.